Monson stands up and he said, now we have a chance, let us fight for our, our own independence. And people threw their puglies, the turbans or caps into the air. Some people jumped up and there was a spontaneous, uh, you see, feeling of uh, joy. After all, when we are losing life, fighting for the British democracy and independence, why shouldn't we fight for our own democracy and independence? Within two weeks, around 40,000 Indian prisoners signed up for the INA. Some were bullied into joining and there were allegations that some had suffered physical brutality. Those who refused were sent to Japanese labor camps. But the great majority of those who joined the INA did so voluntarily. उसने मुझे सब कुछ समझा दिया वही पहले बातचीत हो गई वो भाषण वाचन थी तो मुझे पता लग गया कि भाई ये तो ऐसे ऐसे बात है तो मैंने कहा भाई ठीक है हम भी आपके साथ रहेंगे तो मैंने उसी दिन तैयार किया था वी वर शॉक्ड दैट सच अ थिंग कुड हैव हैपेंड पजल्ड एंड द पजल वाज नेवर रिजॉल्व्ड रियली अंटिल द एंड ऑफ द वॉर पजल्ड एज टू व्हाई पीपल कुड हैव चेंज साइड्स इन दैट वे we didn't understand in Delhi how bad that city could be. Nor would, did we understand, we should have, but we didn't, that the Indian troops had taken the brunt of it. They saw the brunt of this really dreadful retreat. By mid-1942, the British had lost virtually everything east of India. Churchill sent the suffered Crips to India in a desperate attempt to rally support for the war effort by offering constitutional changes. But his offer, although it implied independence, accepted the breakup of India into separate states. It was completely unacceptable to the Congress. Gandhi responded by launching a mass agitation to force the British to quit India. The government crushed the quit India movement, failing virtually the entire Congress leadership and thousands of Congress supporters. In February 1943, Boris began another epic journey, the first stage in a German submarine. Unknown to him, the INA was in disarray. A dispute had resulted in the arrest of Mohan Singh. Indians in Singapore were calling for both. A Japanese submarine took him on to Sumatra and he flew to Tokyo to meet the Japanese Premier, General Tojo. General Tojo appears to be uh, hesitant to give him help because uh, he, he felt uh, that the uh, Indian National Army had some dispute among themselves and they were rather arrogant and ineffective and undesirable. But uh, why? They met. They are told a completely changed uh, opinion and uh, promised to support him in his fight for... In Asia, I have been saying repeatedly that we, the Indian people, could not have wished or even dreamt of a better combination of circumstances for helping us to achieve our liberty. Just before Subhash Chandra Bose had arrived all the Indians in Southeast Asia, and especially those who are intimately connected with the Indian Independence League and the INA, were feeling very despondent and discouraged because General Mohan Singh had become a prisoner of war and wanted to completely disband the uh, INA. And the civilians had not been recruited into the army and they were also felt feeling rather let down. So when Sufar Chandra Bose arrived, there was a tremendous enthusiasm and an upsurge in the spirit of the people and we all felt that he was being given a new lease of life and that he had found a leader who would lead us on. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
cafe hall was absolutely packed like a tin of sardines. I was in the front row. So there were, uh, you see, a song going on. Subhash ji, Subhash ji, wo jaan hind a gaye. Subhash, Subhash, the very life of India has come. Subhash, who is the owner of India, whom we can believe he has come. Then um, Rashbihari Bose stood up. He said, I have brought for you, he put on uh, Netaji's uh, shoulders, uh, the best specimen of an Indian. Here I present Subhash Chandra Bose to you. Other mass meetings followed. The last was attended by some 60,000 troops and Indian civilians. Both promised to reach India within a year and gave the movement its war cry, Chalo Dilli, onward to Delhi. We all felt that we were free. We all felt that we were somebody. We all felt that today that there is this pride to be an Indian. And I think it moved us and there was really a lot of people wept, a lot of people cheered, a lot of people felt great. As far as I'm concerned, I felt that I was an Indian and I was proud to be an Indian. And that at that moment I felt that though I was young, that I could do something. was that the tide of war had already turned against the Axis powers in the Pacific and in Europe. Hitler's Russian campaign staggered into defeat at Stalingrad before both had even left Berlin. By the time North Africa fell to the Allies, the Japanese had themselves lost key battles in the Pacific. Although both knew that time was against him, the training program for recruits, including language and history lessons, suggested a long fight. How quickly it happened, I just had no idea. And as I always said, you may not reach Delhi. You may fall on the way. And that's what all of us felt, that we may not reach Delhi. And it may be a long struggle. And you always talk of a strong struggle, though we have seen the blitzkrieg war of the Japanese occupation and things like that. We didn't think that it could happen that way. And if it happens, it will be good. But we didn't think it would happen that way. It will be a long struggle. Both were seen to involve women and formed a regiment for them. The first time I put on my uniform, I felt so free and felt I would be able to do anything. Because I always was felt encumbered by the sari. First I felt very proud also that I was now a soldier in the army of India's liberation. Joseph's personality and vision inspired men and women, soldiers and civilians, young and old. His colleagues still feel the spell he cast over them. One should see him. He, he, you are so much attracted towards him. I can't tell you why or what is the reason for it, but apart from the fact that he has so much of love for every Indian. And, uh, anyone who has seen him once and uh, come close in contact with him once, he will never forget. He will never be disloyal to him again. That's what I felt I feel even now. Bose's plans demanded the total commitment from his followers that he gave himself. I demand of you one thing above all. I demand of you blood. It is blood alone that can avenge the blood the enemy has spilled. It is blood alone that can pay the price of freedom. Give me blood and I promise you freedom. The Japanese admired both, but they found him an uncompromising ally, even though he was dependent upon them. He was not the sort of man who would become a puppet of anybody, you know. Very independent minded. Uh, very strong willed person. I don't think he became uh, a puppet of uh, uh, Japan or Hitler or Mussolini, either, you know. Uh, he was not the sort of man. 
Both formed the provisional government of Free India. It was the three months of his arrival in Singapore, INA troops were moving to Burma. His idea was an invasion of India. And in 1942, the Japanese had driven up to the Chindwin River in Burma and stopped. I think if the Japanese, if they had pushed on, they could have gotten into eastern India then in 1942. What Bose tried to get them to do was, as soon as possible, to reawaken that possibility and to carry out an invasion of India which he believed would be more successful uh, or would be successful with support growing inside of India as soon as a Japanese and Indian force made its way into India. We felt it was possible to invade India, but the uprising was not to be in the British Indian Army as to increase the strength of the revolutionary movement that was going on in India. But unfortunately, our news of the strength of the Quit India movement and its consequences was very, very meager. We didn't realize that after all the leaders had been put into jail, that there was no real leadership of the movement. Both and his cabinet also failed to appreciate that the flow of information into India was as limited as the flow of information out. Once he started his activities outside of India, he was blacked out of the news. I mean, the British controlled the press, they controlled the radio. Uh, he was blacked out. There was very little known about the Indian National Army in India during World War II. Despite widespread anti-British feelings, India produced the largest volunteer army in the world. The number of Indians serving rose from 131,000 before the war to nearly a million by 1942. A year later, it had doubled to nearly 2 million. Another 13 million Indians worked in defense services and the war industry, supplying the British Indian Army. One took the enemy prisoners, David and Goliath, and this time Goliath spoils the story by winning. The Infall Offensive began in March 1944. The INA added nearly 10% to a Japanese force of about 87,000. Kohima was captured. The INA raised their flag on Indian soil. But there were few supplies. इस मोरे में काफी बड़ी सप्लाई पकड़ी थी मोरे टैंक के अंदर वहां गेहूं से आटा था उस बोरियों पे मिट्टीया तेल डाल के दुश्मन ने जलते हुए आग लगाई थी ऊपर ऊपर का तो जल गया और नीचे मिट्टी के तेल की तो बूतो नीचे चली गई लेकिन आटा बचा हुआ था वो आटा हमने कई महीने लगातार खाया है वहां से तो दुश्मन खाते रहे रिटायरमेंट के बाद तो बिल्कुल कुछ मिला ही नहीं बंबू की जड़ और तेल की जड़ या जंगल में कहीं कहीं धान के खेत होते थे ना उन धानों में से Success turned to catastrophe. The British had air superiority and dropped medical supplies and rations as they advanced. The monsoon began and the invaders failed to take in fall. They were forced back over the mountains without supplies or transport. The INA lost some 400 dead in battle, 800 captured, 700 deserted, and 1,500 through illness and starvation. Of the 2,600 survivors, 2,000 needed hospital treatment. <laughs> I am not a good person. 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 I am
もうバラバラバラバラただ下がるんだけどもうみんな弱ってますからね下がっていくのにも気力も何もないから日本軍にはもう相当でさしさが出てきました日がねもうそのいわゆるこうマナリアとそれからこのゲリねゲリでいて歩けないので食べ物も食べてないそれでバタバタ進んでいくわけですよ歩き,歩きながらでもそのうじるの湧いてるのがおるんですからね兵隊ではそうするとねその連中がもうきついもんだから道であの歩けないで寝るでしょとそのまま死んじゃうわけですそうすると死んだそれがねその雨に当たるのとそれからその腐っていくわけでねもう話にならんのですよ匂いはねそれで無事が湧いてるんですよ死体にだからその中を、まあ、いわゆる前線からその下っている人たちはその中を歩いてこねてなら Both had no experience as a military commander, but tried to maintain morale combining threats of execution with praise for valor. He never visited i m f a l but he went to the southern front and was taken by what he found. There were mass desertions, including even senior officers. Both thought the Iron Age would fight to the finish, but was eventually persuaded to retreat. He knew the end was close in Europe, and once Germany surrendered, the Allies could concentrate on Japan. After the fall of Imphal and the retreat, and then it became quite obvious that the British were going to recapture Burma, s u b a s h a d e b o s used to have long talks with us that he himself would see that he was not taken a prisoner by the British, but he wanted as many of us as possible to be taken as prisoners of war and sent back to India because he felt that was the only way. That the Indian people would come to know about the INA and what it had stood for. The end, of... the end of the war in Asia was so sudden it took most of the combatants by surprise. As victory was celebrated, the British faced a dilemma. The Commander in Chief, General a u k e n l e t had to do something about the INA. There was a desire to punish them. And it was necessary to protect the British Indian Army from contamination. It was impossible to court martial the whole army, but interrogations were started. The British were keen to prove reports of mistreatment and even torture by the INA. We were asked to find、uh, witnesses to atrocities, but there were very few. I, mean, I, can't... <laughs> I can remember again and again signing reports that said, Atrocities, nothing, or atrocities, no information, or, or whatever. We always had to put the heading in atrocities, but、um, there wasn't very much to be found. Let's put ourselves back in a u k e n l e t s shoes. The British thought these were clearly traitorous, treasonous people, and they thought that Indians would see that. They have taken an oath to the Empire and To fight with their Indian and British colleagues. They thought that these people would not be respected for what they had done. They would not be seen as heroic nationalists,、uh, but rather as, as simple traitors, murderers, etc. I think this was, a, this was a miscalculation. In other words, they're not seeing the political dimension. The first trials were held in the Red Fort in Delhi. Itself a symbol of Indian national pride. The three INA officers selected for trial were Shah Nawaz Khan, a Muslim, and Prem Saigal, a Hindu, and Gurbak Singh Dillon, a Sikh, and the surviving member of the three. We all were found guilty for raising war. We had never refused that we did not、uh, wage war. We deserve to be dead. But then there was so much of popularity、uh, amongst the people that the, the Punjab governor had to advise、uh, the commander in chief in India, Sarakonak, that we should not be hanged.
we should not be executed. You see, I felt that the Raj at that time had uh, come to fear the word martyr and martyrdom. The court condemned all three defendants to transportation, but they were released immediately. Within weeks, all the pending trials were abandoned. The British faced mutiny and insubordination in the armed forces. The realization that the loyalty of the Indian forces was now uncertain hastened independence. In their own way, the INA had reached Delhi. Both had always believed his army would stand as a symbol of defiance, whether it won or lost in combat. After his retreat from Burma, he'd gone to Singapore. He raised a memorial there to the INA dead. As he worked late on 13th August 1945, Messengers came to tell him the surrender of Japan was imminent. His response was, so that's that. The next day he held a cabinet meeting, had a tooth out, watched the play put on by the women's regiment, and issued what was to be his last order of the day. After the Japanese surrender, both made his way to Saigon. For years, both his family and followers believed that the story of what happened next would cover for another escape. Both and one aide joined a Japanese general who was going north to Manchuria to supervise the surrender to the Russians. They flew from Saigon and stopped to refuel in Formosa, now Taiwan. The plane crashed on takeoff and Dr. Yoshimi says he treated both for serious burns. <laughs> I still feel even now that he didn't die in that accident. But he and Colonel Shide and General Shide went in another aircraft, not in the aircraft that is supposed to have crashed in Taiwan. He didn't go there. Even some other way. <laughs> Some of the things, for instance, the coffin in which he was taken to the cremate crematorium was only five feet long. This man was a six footer, full six feet. He couldn't have gone into that coffin. Very definitely not. Must have been some Japanese who died and put in the way something on that. Both his ashes were taken to Tokyo and placed in a Buddhist temple. But there were many who refused to believe that they were really his. Nearly 50 years have gone, and uh, some people in the family uh, well, are prepared to, to, to accept the fact of his death. But even so, I should add that uh, there are some in the family who still refuse to believe it. in India about the fate of both weren't settled by two government inquiries made after independence. The press occasionally reported sightings. But even in the chaos of the Japanese surrender, there were no doubts in official circles. The Japanese said that he'd been killed in Formosa. Colonel Figgis, as he then was, uh, produced a, a report on the interrogations he'd been able to, car to, to carry out. 
in in Tokyo of the people who'd been in the hospital and people who'd been on the plane with him. Uh, and he wasn't in the slightest doubt whatever. We are waiting for the British government to release their file about Bose's death. And I think if they had issued a report immediately dealing with the details of the aircraft, it might have cut off the myth before it started to grow. In Singapore, since the war, his family and followers have felt an abiding sense of loss caused by the belief that Bose was a man who could have altered India's future. I think if he had returned uh, in, say, 46, uh, there was nothing that could stop him from marching to power. The only factor that he had to contend with was the Gandhi factor. And uh, Gandhi, after learning about the events in East Asia during the war, I think would be quite prepared to let him be in power and have his blessing. Today, the statue of Bose looks down on the Red Fort in Delhi. As his followers prepare celebrations for the centenary of his birth, his ashes lie, still the subject of dispute, in a temple in Tokyo. Indians who will be born not as slaves but as free men because of your colossal sacrifice will proudly proclaim to the world that you, their forebears, fought and lost the battle, but through temporary failure, paved the way to ultimate success and glory. The darkest hour always precedes the dawn. India shall be free and before long. As a part of this commemorative season on the BBC, on Tuesday night on Radio 2, there's a documentary which pays homage to the men and women who were in the Far East when the war against the Japanese ended. That's at 9 o'clock on Tuesday evening on BBC Radio 2.